Welcome to another one of my videos. You can help support this channel by subscribing and liking and by grabbing one of my free ebooks. Today I'm promoting Shades of Grey, an apocalyptic science fiction series. Read the first two ebooks for free. I'll leave a link in the upper right hand corner and one in the description to my website. And now to the video. In today's video, I'm going to be going through all the perk cards. So I'm going to be going through them pretty quickly so that this video is not extremely long. So if I don't cover anything that you have a question about, just leave it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer your questions. So let's get to the perk cards. And since this video will be somewhat long, I will put timestamps in the description. So if you're looking just, you want to look at the, the lock perk cards, you can go down into the description and just click on the timestamp and it'll take you that far into the video. To find the perk cards, you're going to go into your Pit Boy and look for the level up button. For the PlayStation, it is the triangle. So once you're in your Pit Boy, just hit the triangle button and it'll take you to the perk cards. Now, every once in a while, you'll get a perk card pack, which gives you four perk cards and a piece of bubblegum. And you can immediately use these perk cards by slotting them into any of your specials that has a point that is available that you can use them. Now, some perk cards take more. The more stars you have, the more they take. And sometimes you don't even need to have multiple stars. They just might start out they need two. If you don't know, let's look at specials real quick. Uh, go over into your stat on the Pit Boys and all the specials are listed. If you notice, strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck, they spell special. And as you can see, I have multiple points in mind. One, I'm a bloody build, which gives me extra points. And I'm also over 300 on level. So that gives me a whole lot of more points to start with. Each special can only hit 15 as a maximum, not including bloody builds or any other, like if you have a weapon that gives you a plus one to strength, that'll go over the 15. But your basic points that you slot into the specials, your maximum is 15 to work with. And you'll be putting points into your specials all the way through level 50. So you can do the math. You're not going to have 15 in every slot since you only have 50 points to work with once you're um, done with um, gaining special points. So it's very important where you put your points depending on what type of build you want. So let's go through the specials really quick and just give you an idea of where you might want to put them before we look at the perk cards. First up is strength. Strength affects how much you can carry, including weapons and armor. It also affects the damage that all melee attacks. So if you're holding a weapon that doesn't shoot, strength is very important to you. Next up, we have perception. And perception is basically your awareness of nearby enemies so you can detect them earlier. Your ability to detect stealthy movements, so I believe that's like the invisible people and your weapons accuracy in VATS, so it improves your percentage in VATS on the accuracy. Endurance infects your health, so the higher endurance, the more health you have. It also it has to do with sprinting. The more endurance you have, the longer you can sprint, and you have more resistance to diseases. Charisma's next. I always don't you put a lot of points in charisma. Basically, it's for bartering, uh, some rewards from group quests, and you get to share more of your perk cards with your fellow teammates. Intelligence is all the brain stuff. So hacking computers, uh, crafting anything, building in camp, and scrapping stuff has to do with intelligence. Agility is the measure of your overall fitness and flexibility. It affects the number of action points and vast and how you sneak. I always put a lot of points in this one. And last is luck. Luck measures your general good fortune and affects the recharge rate of critical hits, as well as the condition and durability of items that you loot. And here is helpful hint number one. You don't have to spin your perk card points. You can let them sit and accumulate until the card that you want comes around. Why invest in a card that you don't need? And now I'll go through every single perk card that is available. These are just regular perk cards. Now, 
because I'm over level 50, it's not gonna tell me the level that I need to use these cards. Sometimes you gotta be a level 15, 30, 45, 50 to use some of these perk cards. So basically, I'm, all I'm gonna focus on is what they are for. The highest level a card can be is level 50. And I'll also let you know if the card is a good investment. In other words, should you max out any particular card? Some cards you get free from the packs that you open up, I think every five levels, even after you're level 50. And each level that you make, you get one point to spend on a card by going in and seeing what is available in the pool of cards. And we're gonna be going into Strength Special first and checking out all the perk cards there. And first up is this very important card, I think, because always having weight issues, Ballistic Weapon Ammo. You'll lose 45% of the weight with one star or one point in this card and 90% if you use two stars in this card. This is a good investment card. If you're gonna have a melee build, but a no power armor melee build, this card is very good. For every point of strength that you have, you'll gain two to four damage resistance. Now understand, anytime that they mention points, they are talking about points that you actually put into your perk cards and not points that you gain from like weapons or bloody build. The basher card, of course, gives you better damage with bashing. I find that it's a waste because you only have so many points to use on cards. So why not put your points to better use? Bear Arms is another card that helps you with weight problems. Um, and in my opinion, a must have for heavy gunners. And Slugger is for melee characters who use the two-handed weapons. They'll give you a minimum of a 10% damage. And here's a helpful hint. There are actually three Slugger cards. And if you notice, you get 10% on your first point, but then five after each additional points. So it's better to actually put one point in each of the Slugger cards, and that way you have 30 for three points than using three points here and only getting 20%. Blocker is next, and if you're a melee character, anytime you block, you can gain additional less damage from your opponent, or even if you just block with one of your like rifles or something. I find I'm not paying attention enough when I'm carrying a rifle or gun that I don't actually use the block. So this card is actually useless to me. Bullet Shield is a great card for uh, power armor and non-power armor. If you just have a heavy gun, and especially if you're a low level, it gives you more resistance against damage. Gladiator is basically the one-handed version of Slugger. If it's a one-handed weapon, it'll give you 10% more damage, and so on. Heavy Gunner, Expert, and Master are basically just adding damage to any type of heavy gun. And if you notice again, if you just put one point in, you get 10% and only 5% with each preceding star. And these are cards again that if you put one point in each one, you'll get 30% versus if you put three stars in just one. Incisor is a very important card if you're going to have melee build or just use any type of melee weapon because you ignore your target's armor starting at 25% going all the way up to 75 cent, 75% like I said a must have for any melee character. This is an excellent investment. Iron Fist is next and in my opinion is a waste card. Who's going to go around with no weapon whatsoever and punch people right? Unless you're yeah I don't know. Lock and Loaded could be a nice card to have if you're going to be nothing but a heavy gun build. In my opinion, it's a card that you might use later on once you level up higher and put your points into something else. Martial Arts is another must-have card for any melee build or anyone who's just wanting to use some melee weapons. Not only do you get a faster swing, you also eliminate a lot of the weight depending on how many stars you put in the card. Again, another must-have card for any person going to be using melee weapons. This is another excellent investment. Ordnance Express eliminates weights for your explosives like grenades. Pack Rat eliminates junk weight, but I find it it's a useless card since I do have the unlimited scrap box for Fallout first. Pain Train is a cool card to have if you're in power armor, 
but uh, it can also be a dangerous card, especially if you go to White Springs and run and happen to accidentally bump into a robot because now you have attacked the robots at White Spring and now you've become their enemies. Not that that's ever happened to me. For power armor users, I would maybe put this card in later and not focus on it right away. If you find that you're using shotguns a lot, Scattershot is a very important card. It's two in one, you get less weight on the card and it reloads faster. So this is actually a pretty important card if you're gonna be using a lot of the shotguns. And this next grouping, Shotgunner, Expert, and Master, again, are damage cards. Again, if you put one point in each of them, you'll get 30% versus if you put three stars in just one. Again, another important card if you're gonna be using the shotgun. Strong back will help you carry a lot more stuff on yourself. Um, not that important of a card, but if you get it at the beginning, might, might as well use it. But in my opinion, I wouldn't waste one of your points in actually grabbing one of these cards. Sturdy frame is another card that helps you with weight issues. I found that I actually never use this card, even though I do majority have regular armor as I am a bloody build. If you find that you are spending a lot of time in power armor, full charge could be a helpful card for you. If you just consume less of your fusion core while sprinting. It might not be one of the first cards that you grab, but maybe later on, once you figure out that you'd like to stay in power armor a lot, it might be helpful. Especially if you're always running out of fusion cores. Traveling Pharmacy is probably one of the most important cards to have because it's another weight issue card. It eliminates weight and like a stem pack, like a pound a piece. And if you carry quite a bit, if you just carry 30, that's 30 pounds of weight that you're carrying around. And as a bloody build, I even find that I'm still using this card. I might not use it at one point, but if I get overweight, I'll just pop it in. That way I can make it to the next train station to trade out some of my stuff. This one is a good investment. And here are the other two gladiator cards. Again, they're just the one-handed melee weapons with additional damage. And here are the other two slugger cards. Again, these are the two-handed melee weapon bonus damage. And now we'll take a look at the perception perk cards. Awareness is first. This card gives you a target specific damage resistance while in VATS, which is okay if you're taking the time to check it out and not shooting first and asking questions later. And here are the commando cards. These are basically those damage cards that starts at 10%. And here are all three, expert, master, and regular commando. Must have if you have like the fixer or the submachine gun or any weapon that fires rapidly. Next up, we have concentrated fire. And unlike other Fallout games, you cannot target limbs without at least having one point in this card. So at least put one point in this card at the beginning when you once you get it so that you can get the you know the 50 percent plus for damage to like limbs and stuff like that so it is an important card and i do believe this does not work with melee if anybody knows any different let me know but melee does not work with concentrated fire this is a good investment card crack shot is for your pistols one-handed weapons and you gain uh range and more accuracy while aiming down the site with this card. I don't use pistols a lot, so I don't invest in any of the pistol cards. Exterminator's a really good card to have. It ignores the armor of any insect, 25, 50, and 75%, depending on how many stars. And this includes all the Mylurks, those crab-like things that wander around uh, Fallout 76 Wasteland. This one is an excellent investment. Fire in the Hole is the card to enable you to have that arc when uh, throwing grenades and stuff like that. It also gives you uh, the ability to throw farther depending on how many stars are in it. This next one is a very good card, Glow Sight. Basically, if the enemy has glowing in its name, it's going to give you 20, 40, or 60% damage against it. It's very, very important, if, especially if you go to White Springs after it's been nuked and trying to take out all the glowing ones. So it's a good card to invest in later, maybe not at the beginning as you're leveling up, but yes, very good investment card. Green Thumb is an excellent card, um, especially if you get it for free, you might, especially it's a low level card. It just doubles anything that you pick, that you harvest, flowers, crops. Um, Especially if you're going to be cooking, this is a good card, but also when you're starting out and you need caps, you can go around and pick everything 
and go to the vendors and they give you at least one cap for everything that you've picked. And now you're getting two for the price of one, so to say, as you pick them. So it's a good thing to have, especially when you're trying to raise caps, when you're starting to level up. And as you get more and more cards, you don't have to necessarily have this card slotted all the time. You can just slot it when you're gonna go pick the uh, vegetables and crops and flora. This is the same with any card. As you progress in levels, you'll have lots of cards, but the cards only work if they are slotted. So remember that as you're going along. So, Grenader is another grenade card. Basically, it just expands the radius that your thrown weapons um, damage. Ground Pounder is another card for the automatic rifles. You get a 10% reload faster and a better accuracy with hip firing up to 30% on the reload speed for this card. Long shot gives you more range with your rifles and should work with non-automatic and automatic rifles, but you have to be looking through your scope for it to work. It does not work while using VATS. Night Eyes is an okay card. You get the same with the night scope. Um, basically, you can see with the what's it infrared, infragreen vision while between the hours of 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. In my opinion, this is a waste card, a, a bad investment. Night person is an okay card, but you're investing in intelligence, which is mostly for crafting, and it works only between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. You do also get added perception. It could be a card that you slot in at night if you do a lot of hunting at night. In my opinion, it's not a good investment card. Butcher's Bounty is another card. If you do a lot of cooking, it's good. Otherwise, it's not that great of an investment. You get 40% chance of extra meat, up to 80% from the corpses that you loot. To pick locks, you actually need these cards unless the pick lock is a zero, then you can do it without any of these cards. There are three of them. Each one's only a point and and the more difficult locks will require all three cards. I would only grab one of these cards if you absolutely need one. Otherwise, just wait till they come around free. It's up to you, depending on you might be doing a quest where you need to get into something. Refractor is an OK card. Um, the more points you put in it, the higher your energy resistance is, but it's only giving you one. It's only giving you energy resistance, and some cards give you both energy and damage, so they're a better investment than this Refractor. Next up are the Rifleman cards. Again, if you just put one point in each, you'll get 10% times three, which is 30, instead of investing three stars in one card and only getting 20%. These are for non-automatic rifles, so the single shot rifles. And Skeet Shot is next. It's another shotgun card. If you're heavily invested in shotguns, this might be an okay investment. Otherwise, I would not even bother with this one or just slot it in with one star. Sniper's next, and it's an okay card. I wouldn't invest in it early. Um, if you're heavy into sniping, maybe. Otherwise, I don't think it's a very good investment card. Tank Killer is an excellent investment if you use rifles or pistols. Even if you're a melee build and you use these occasionally, it's still a very good investment. It ignores 12%, 24%, and 30% of your enemy's armor, and it has a chance to stagger. The stagger is not that important, but it's the armor ignoring point to it. So yes, excellent investment here. These next cards in Perception, I considered poor investments. This one is if you look for magazines. Uh, why waste a point on something like that? You might get it for free. Who looks for magazines all the time? This is for bobbleheads, if you're looking for bobbleheads. Who really goes around looking for bobbleheads? So yeah, poor investment. Fortune Finder. It just lets you know if you're near a cap stash. Okay, maybe you, you like money a lot, but yeah, I still say poor investment. Now these are for the bow. Not a lot of people use the bow or crossbows. So these next few cards, yeah, I don't see as an investment at all. We are now entering the endurance perk card section. And first up is the skeleton card. 
It's an okay investment. If you're heavy on melee without power armor, this helps prevent limb damage by 30, 60 or completely eliminates this. I think this is basically just so that you're not limping around. I think that's all this card does besides reducing the damage. I don't find it to be a very good investment card. If you happen to grab it and you have an empty slot, go ahead and slot it in. It does help out. And here's one of the first Hunger and Thirst cards. It's called All Nighter. Since they changed the game and you don't have to eat and drink anymore, these cards are not as important, but being well fed and well hydrated do give you bonuses. So this card could be somewhat important. Hydration is really important with your AP. Hunger is your health. So when you're well hydrated, you get a bonus in re AP regeneration and when you're well fed you get just a bonus in your health so I think it's like a plus 25 to your health this next card is somewhat cool but a poor investment basically you don't take rads and you can breathe underwater when it's slotted uh, this next card is grody and yet somewhat cool at the same time it's cannibal you hear people go around and gorging themselves on corpses that's what they're using is this cannibal card and basically it just restores their health and hunger in my opinion, is a poor investment card. This next card is an excellent investment card. It's called Kim Fiend. If you use any of the chemicals, once you have this card maxed out, it actually will last twice as long. So yes, definitely an excellent investment card. An example, if you have this card maxed out and you use a stem, let's say Psycho, that lasts three minutes, it will now last six minutes. So it actually might get you through the entire event. That you're trying to accomplish. Next card is Kim Resistant. It just helps you not get addicted to the Kims you're using. If you use Kims a lot, this might be an okay card to invest in or just carry around a lot of Addictol and that way you have something you can take that will get rid of your addictions. I believe Addictol will only get rid of one addiction per use. Cola Nut is an okay card to invest in. It basically gives you twice or three times the benefits of drinking the cola but it doesn't increase the time that these benefits last so to me uh, colas for replenishing health is great and maybe a quick ap increase but yeah they don't last very long and with this card slotted uh, drinks just quench your thirst a little bit more could be important if you're trying to keep your ap up this card allows you to take less damage from fire attacks and explosives. If you're going to have a bloody build and you're aiming to have low health, Ghoulish is not the card for you because it will regenerate your lost health and you don't want to regenerate your lost health when you're trying to keep your health low. So an okay card, a not an investment card. Good Doggy is a good card if you want to keep you, yourself well fed and while using dog food. It only works on dog food. You just get more benefits from eating dog food. At lower levels, being well fed will give you a plus 25 to your health, so it might be an okay card to use. I don't know if you should invest in it. Hydro Fix is if you use a lot of Kims, it'll keep you from getting thirsty 50% less. Not a high priority investment because if you chew gum, there's different levels of gum, it will re basically reduce your thirst and hunger for periods of time. So Hydro Fix, a poor investment. Homebody, I consider a poor investment. It just helps you regenerate health while you're at your camp or workshop. If you're not heavy into power armor or you just haven't found power armor yet, Ironclad is an excellent investment. It gives you 10 on energy and damage resistance. It's one of those that gives you two for the price of one. Again, an excellent investment. Does not work with while you're wearing power armor, but again, it's an excellent low level card just to help you reach those uh, damage resistance that you greatly need. These next two cards I see as poor investments are in stomach, just decreases the chance of grabbing a disease while eating things that haven't been cooked. And lead belly is basically the same thing, but it's the drinking version of the card. Again, I find these are both poor investments. 
Life Giver, you need two points just to slot this card at its first level. It's an okay card if you have it and have the room and you're low level. You need probably the health, but otherwise I see it as a poor investment card. These next two cards I also find a, as poor investments. Um, another Hunger card. If you use a lot of Kims and have this card, it'll help reduce your hunger. And the uh, next one is and natural resistance. This makes you less likely to catch a disease. Just make sure you carry disease cure and you'll be okay and you won't even need this card. In case you catch a, catch a disease, you take one disease cure for each disease that you've caught. Nocturnal Fortitude, I find a poor investment. It only raises your health between the hours of 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. This next card, I wouldn't call it a sound investment, but if you get it for free, it does help you out if you're a non-bloody build. Basically, you are low on health and don't have a stem pack and it's between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., it will slowly regenerate your health as long as there's no radiation in the way. Professional drinker, I find a very poor investment. It just helps you not get addicted to alcohol. Just carry on addictal if you use a lot of alcohol. This next card is an excellent investment if you are a bloody build. Bloody builds basically get irradiated so that their health stays low all the time and doesn't regenerate. And since you already have the radiation, why not get up to five strength from this card? Again, an excellent investment for bloody builds. And if you don't know what a bloody build is, basically they take advantage of the unyielding armor that gives them more points in their special, the lower their health, except for endurance. All the other special, except for an endurance. Rad resistant, a very poor investment. You're better off getting power armor or trying to get the Chinese stealth armor so that you have the radiation resistance that you need and you won't have to invest in this card at all. Also, there are Kims that can help out with that. Rejuvenated, an excellent card to invest in, but only if you're gonna worry about being fully fed and fully hydrated, otherwise it's a waste card. This next card is a very, very poor investment unless you're the healer of your group. Otherwise, how many times do you actually go and revive a person with a stem pack? This next one is also for hunger, if you're heavily invested in being well fed. This is okay. I would not, I would consider it a poor investment card. Solar Power, I consider it a very good investment card, no matter what build you are. If it's between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., you're gonna gain up to three to strength and endurance. And endurance is very important because it's the one thing that the bloody does not elevate. Sunkissed is not one of your investment cards, but it's a good card to have, especially if you don't have the right away and you have radiation. If it's between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., it will remove radiation. And this is a card you don't want to have slotted if you are a bloody build and trying to keep your radiation levels at a certain level. These next two cards I consider poor investment. We have another one that has to do with drinking and catching diseases from drinking. And the other one is just catching diseases from creatures. Again, just carry disease cure with you. And now we'll be looking at the charisma perk cards. Animal friend gives you a chance to pacify an animal while aiming at it. I find it to be a poor investment card. Bodyguard is next. It's another card that gives you damage and energy resistance, but this has to do with how many people are on your team. So like when you team up or you do public teams. This is an okay investment card because it depends on how many people are actually on your team and to get the most out of it, of course, you gotta have three other people. So this, like I said, is an okay investment card. Next is the EMT card. I find it a waste card, a poor investment, unless of course you are the healer of your team. Basically, if you bring some 
players you revive come back with health regeneration for 15 seconds and increases up to 60 seconds. Next is Field Surgeon, and it's another card where you see one star, but it actually takes two points to slot it. Stem packs and rat away will work much quicker, and I find it to be a very poor investment card. And the next one is Friendly Fire. Basically, if you are using a weapon that has fire, like a flamer, and you hit a teammate, it will regenerate their health. It's great if you're like on a daily ops where you are in close combat and just probably hitting your teammates all the time. I still consider it a poor investment card. The next two cards I consider poor investment. And first up we have Happy Camper. Basically it's another you slow down your hunger and thirst card. Happy Go Lucky. You get extra luck when you are um, under the effects of alcohol two and then three if you full if you put all the stars in this card again i don't find this as a very good investment card hard bargain is not a very good investment card but a good card to use now this one you would slot and then unslot so you go to a vendor you slot this card you just get better return when selling and buying so again not a good investment but a good card to use the next two cards are poor investments. Basically, if you're the healer of the group, you might use them. But again, to invest in these cards, healing hands players you revive are cured of all rats. Very bad if the player on your team is a bloody build. The next one is injector players you revive gain plus six action points regeneration for 10 minutes and so on, depending on how many stars. This next card is a good card to use, especially if you're trying to level up. It's called Inspirational. If you are on a team, so if at least one other person is on the team, you're going to get at least 5, 10, or 15% more XP while doing things. Now again, it's not, a, it's not a good investment card, but a card to use when you do have it. This next card is a good investment, especially if you play alone. It's called Lone Wanderer, and it's going to give you two things. At a one star, it's going to give you 10% less damage, and you're going to gain 10% AP re regen, which you definitely want. So I would actually max out this card. Now, the first star is actually going to cost you two, and after that, so two stars will cost you three, and three stars will cost you four to actually slot this. But again, a very good investment card no matter what level you are. Magnetic Personality is another good card to use. Not a, a great investment, but a good card to use when you do have it. If you are on teams a lot and you like to buy and sell from vendors, not players, vendors, this will improve what you get for buying and selling. So if you have three people on your team, you can get up to six extra charisma. If you are a bloodied melee player, overly generous might be a good card to use. I don't know about investing in it. If you have a lot of rads, it increases the chance that you will inflict 25 rads or 50 rads on the person you are attacking, but it's not always doing it. So that's why it's not an excellent investment card. Party Girl is next. It's a card that has to deal with if you're drinking alcohol all the time. It doubles the positive effects of it. I still find it to be a poor investment. One, the first star will cost you two points to use it, and two, it will take a while before you actually get alcohol that actually does really good things. So maybe grab the card later on. I would not invest in it in the beginning. The next two cards I consider poor investments. The first one's Philanthropist. I can't say it right, but anyway, it's another healer card, You, but it's not healing. But if you are the healer of the group, it just restores hunger and thirst for your teammates. The next one is a Quack Surgeon. Instead of using stem packs, you can use, use liquor to revive players. 
The next two, again, I find to be poor investments. First one is rad sponge. If you're afflicted by rads, like you're a bloody, then you will heal teammates near you 80 of their rads, which is bad if they are also a bloody. Um, spiritual healer, you will regen you yourself will regenerate health for five seconds after reviving another player. I don't find that a lot of people are healers on teams for Fallout 76. Squad Maneuvers is next. Again, a poor investment, an okay card to use if you have it. If you're on a team, you and your team will be able to run 10% faster or 20% faster. This next card is an excellent, excellent investment if you have mutations. What it does is the positive effects of the mutation are 25% stronger as long as you are on a team with one other person who has at least one mutation. Now, of course, you don't know who has mutation and who doesn't have mutations on your team, unless, of course, they tell you. Suppressor, in my opinion, is a poor investment card. What it does is once you attack an enemy, you reduce their damage output for 10 by 10% for two seconds. But if you take out the enemy very quickly, this card becomes basically useless. Team Medic, I find to be a poor investment, unless of course you're the healer of the group. If you t yourself take a stem pack, then you will heal up to half of, a, of your teammates at the same time. Tenderizer is a good card to use, but I would say a poor investment card. This is another card where you need a, like a boss level opponent for it to be actually any good to you. Because usually you take out an enemy in a couple shots and yeah, the card's useless. The rest of the cards in Charisma I find to be poor investments. You have Bloodsucker, which drinking blood packs will satisfy your hunger more and they no longer radiate you. And next up we have Wasteland Whisper. It's like the animal friend. You can pacify what's considered a creature and the other card focuses on animals that are considered animals. <laughs> travel Agent, basically it costs you less caps to fast travel to some place. A great card to share with teammates, but again, not an awesome investment card. And last, we have Anti-Epidemic. Your diseases cure, have a 50% chance to cure a disease on nearby teammates. It's another healer card if you're the healer of a group. And now we'll move on to the intelligence category for the perk cards. Armorer is an excellent, excellent investment. Max it out as soon as you can. Basically, it has to do with crafting advanced armor mods for your armor. This is a must in Fallout 76. This card is not for power armor. Batteries included is an excellent, excellent investment card. It's another card that reduces the weight, but this time it's energy weapons, which includes fusion cores that power the power armor. So if you're going to carry a lot of this ammo or the fusion cores, you got to have this card to lessen up the weight. Up next is Chemist and another excellent card to invest in if you're going to be creating your own chems. What it does, it doubles the quantity. Now if you have Chemist and Super Duper, which I'll be talking about later, I believe how it works is Super Duper will double just one. So the possibility of getting them two to work together, you'll end up with three, I believe, and not four of the item. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Next is Contractor, and I find it to be a poor investment card. A good card to use, but a poor investment card. Basically, it costs less to craft items for your you know, workshops, and I believe camps, though it just says workshop. It should also work in shelters, and basically it's reducing the items needed to build something for your camp, shelter, or workshop, if I understand the card. And next we have Demolition Expert, and in my opinion it is one of the best 
best cards to invest in if you have any weapons that have explosive ammunition because this will add on to the damage so yes a very very good investment card but it's gonna cost you five stars to max it out next we have first aid not an excellent or good investment card but a good good card to use if you do have it basically it restores more health from your stem packs and the more stars you invest the higher it goes so between 15 percent and 45 percent fix it good is an excellent excellent investment card as long as you use armor or power armor and everybody does use that what it does it, it increases the durability of an item of over a hundred percent and if you max it out it's going to be 200 percent so i would definitely max out this card as soon as you can it just lessens the time that you have to keep coming back and repairing your power armor or regular armor gunsmith is another excellent excellent card to invest in for two reasons um, the more stars you have in it the better or no the longer your weapons will last and you won't have to repair them the other thing is you'll be able to craft higher tier guns with more stars in this perk card so in my opinion it's one of the excellent cards to invest in next up are the hacker cards and again they're like locksmith you need these cards to hack computers depending on how many stars are so if it's a three star hack you're going to have to have all three of these cards again i would not invest in these cards unless of course you need one to complete a quest or an event that you're doing licensed plumber is next now you might use pipe weapons in the beginning but as you level up, you'll use better weapons. I see this as a very poor investment card. Makeshift Warrior is next and another excellent investment card if you are going to be repairing or building any of the melee weapons. This card gives you two things. Your weapons will break slower and you'll have the ability to craft higher level weapons. Nerd Rage is an excellent investment card if you're a bloody build because you're already going to be having the low health, so why not take advantage of this card? If you're at 20% or lower of your health, you're going to gain damage resistance, uh, extra damage against opponents, and a 15% AP regen. So even just putting one point in this card is going to give you a lot. If you're gonna be a power armor build, portable power might be a good card to have. I'm not sure how high of an investment card I would put it at though. Technically, if you put all your armor into one chassis, the chassis itself is gonna weigh 10 pounds no matter what, how many pieces of armor in it. It's the loose pieces of power armor that will have the weight. So consider that when deciding whether or not to invest in this portable power card. Power Patcher is a good card to have if you're going to be crafting or repairing your power armor. Not sure if you want to invest in it or wait till a card becomes available or just wait till you actually need the card. So consider that. Pharmacist just gives your uh, rat away 30% more that it takes away. I would say it's a poor investment card. Power Smith allows you to create a higher level power armor mod, but with this card, you know, I don't actually remember ever using this card when modding out my power armor, so I'm not sure that it's necessary. That's one of those weird cards, you don't even know if you need to have it. So yeah, just consider that. You might need it, I don't know. Power user is a good card to have if you're in the power armor all the time. It just uses less of the fusion cores. I'm not sure that it's a high priority investment card though. Robotics expert, I find to be a poor investment card. It's basically one of those pacify cards, but this is aimed at enemy robots. These next three science cards are excellent cards, but not a high priority investment cards. I would just invest in them as you need them. So don't spend all your perk points as you're going along. 
unless of course you find cards that you need and that way when you do need cards like the science card you'll have extra points that you can spend as you need them when you go into a weapons bench and you want to craft one of the energy weapons it will actually tell you what cards you need so like i said just wait to see what type of cards you need when you get around to actually building energy weapons scrapper is a good card to have not an investment card but a good card to have if you get it and you just slot it into your crafting build which i'll show you later on in this video if you use the power armor and have heavy guns this next card is a must-have it's called stabilizer i would max out this card as soon as you can what it gives you is your heavy guns will gain accuracy and ignore armor depending on how many stars so you start at 15 percent and go all the way up to 45 percent on ignoring armor and this card only works when you are in power armor weapons artisan is another must have gun this works with any weapon basically it's gonna extend the durability of a weapon so when you go to repair it it'll last longer when you're fighting this is very similar to fix it good but it's for weapons so i would max out this card as soon as you can last we have wrecking ball and in my opinion this card has become useless not a lot of people go and attack other people's workshops so that's basically all this card does it gives you more damage while you're attacking people's workshops now, of course if that's what you want to do this is the card for you we'll now be moving to the agility perk card a section and one of my favorite sections and first up is action girl a very high priority investment card get three stars in that card as soon as you can this is a action points or ap regenerator and yeah you want this because you just use it ap and basically a lot of things that you do from running to vats a drillin is an excellent card to invest in it's one of those stackable cards basically you start out at six percent but the more enemies you kill it'll start to stack up and go all the way up to 36 percent and then at the maximum stars you start at 10 percent with a maximum of 60 percent damage for 30 seconds now you'll hold that sec you'll hold that 60 percent damage as long as you keep killing within that 30 seconds. Emo Smith is next, and it's also another excellent card to invest in, and you want to max this card out. What it does at the first star level, it's gonna give you 50% more of your ammunition that you craft, all the way to the 80% with it maxed out. Born Survivor is another excellent card to invest in. Now, if you are a bloody build, you're only going to put one star in this because if you put more stars in it and you are a bloody build, you will never actually hit the 20% health mark. It, it'll only activate at the 30%, which, yeah, you're going to be below 30%. So it'll become a useless card if you put more stars in it for the bloody build any other build besides a bloody build you'll probably want to put the three stars in covert operative is another excellent card to invest in if you do any sneaking whatsoever with a range weapon at the first star you get 2.15 extra damage now me i don't actually put any more points in this i think the 2.15 is great so it's great enough for me and you don't actually gain that much more for having more stars Dead Man Sprinting, in my opinion, is a bad investment card. Yes, if you're below 40% health, you will run 10% faster, but it's going to cost you AP, and you want that AP. So that's why, in my opinion, it's a waste card. Dodgy is next, and in my opinion, this is another waste card. You're going to be able to avoid 10% of incoming damage, but it's gonna cost you AP. Now there's actually a better card out there, it's gonna be in the luck section, that is better with these uh, avoiding damage without the AP cost. So yeah, I would not get dodgy. Enforcer is next, and again, in my opinion, this is another waste card. 
It does give you two things. You get an increased chance to stagger and to cripple a limb, but you're just trying to take out the enemy. So yeah, I don't see why you need to stagger them or cripple a limb unless you're wanting to slow them down. Yeah, but you're just trying to eliminate them. But yeah, I would just maybe not invest in this card. If sneaking is a part of your build, this is a must have card. Um, with this card and only with this card, you'll now be able to lose enemies while sneaking. And you can actually move really fast while sneaking and it's not going to affect your stealth. Without this card, you got to move slow to keep your sneak. A very excellent investment. For you no power armor builds, Evasive is a very good investment card. It's going to give you both uh, damage and energy resistance starting at one point per agility point. So if you're going to max out or nearly max out your agilities, this is a very good card because it'll give you between 15 and 45 damage and energy resistance. Now these are actual points uh, that you put in an agility and not points that you gain from armor and other items. For the longest time, I thought Goat Legs was a useless card, a poor investment, until I got the Secret Service Jetpack. And it will glitch during events, and sometimes the jetpack will shoot you straight up into the air, and then you'll fall down and die. Yes, it's a very bad glitch that they still haven't fixed. Well, if you have at least 40% damage on this card, you have a slight chance of surviving the fall. I think if you max it out to 80, you basically don't die, even if you are a bloody build. Well, let's just say that I am a bloody build with the jetpack and falling to my death all the time. And no matter what, how much oomph you try to get out of the jet, it's still going to be considered a fall. This card is a must have so that you don't constantly die when the jetpack is glitching out during events. <laughs> that was a really long explanation for a card that used to be worthless. Okay, we're moving on to Gorilla. And all three of these cards are the additional damage cards. Again, it's better just to put one point in each one and end up with 30% extra damage than to put three stars just in one card and end up with only 20. These cards are only for automatic pistols. And next we have Gun Fu. Oh. Basically, it's a very good, ex actually an excellent card if you have an automatic weapon. Still a very good card if you have any other type of weapon. Basically, if there is anything left in your vats, it will automatically switch to the next closest enemy and give you 10% damage against them. That's why that, I mean, that's why AP is so important. You want a lot of AP in your vats. This card only benefits you if there are large groups of enemies like events and daily ops. Now, I only invest one star in this. I like that it has the ability to swap enemies automatically. You have to decide for yourself if the more stars is worth the 20 and then the 30 to each additional enemy or not. For the most, VATS doesn't usually last beyond the thirds. So basically, this would reset the effects once you start again in VATS. So keep that in mind when debating whether or not to put one, two, or three stars to end, into this card, but definitely invest at least one star into this card. And don't be fooled by the name. Gumfu does actually work with melee weapons. So yeah, maybe another good investment for you melee builds. If you find that you do use a lot of pistols, Gunrunner might be an okay card to have. It's basically going to increase your speed by 10 or 20% while sprinting if you have a pistol in hand equipped. Then we have Gunslinger cards. These are again your damage cards. These are for pistols that are non-automatic. And again, it is better if you're going to use these cards to invest in each one, one star, to equal out 30 damage instead of putting three points in one and end up with 20% damage with, with having all three stars. Home Defense is a good card if you do a lot of building at your camp and shelters 
and workshops. This just gives you better turrets and traps to lay out. Light footed is a good card to use, but I would not invest in it. Basically, when you're sneaking, you don't trigger mines or floor traps, but there's not really a lot of them. So yeah, I would not invest in this card. Marathoner is a good card to have if you're running a lot. Um, if you find that you're not sprinting a lot and using up AP that you want to put someplace else, this card is not for you. If you find that you're running a lot and running out of AP for other things, this might be a card to invest in. This card is a no power armor card. For me, I found this card useful when I was a low level, and this was basically a card I got rid of when I got into the higher levels because I wanted different cards. To me, Mr. Sandman is a waste card because you gotta meet three criteria. One, it's gotta be at night. Two, you have to do a sneak attack. And three, the weapon needs to be silenced. So this does not work with melee attacks. Modern Renegade, in my opinion, is a poor investment card unless you find that you really like the pistol guns. You do use a lot of pistol guns when you are first starting out because it's basically the only ones you can find at first unless someone's helping you out with crafting low level guns. But as you level up, yeah, then you've just wasted your investment. Moving Target is next and in my opinion, it is a bad investment card. It does give you plus 15 damage and energy per star ranking up, no power armor, but you have to be sprinting. And I find you might be moving fast or standing still when fighting, but not a lot of the times you are running unless you are running away, <laughs> which does happen. But yeah, I, I see it as a waste card. And next up we have the ninja, the ninja card. It is very like the Covert Operator, but this works with your melee weapons. But unlike the Covert Operator, I'm going to say max out this card because you actually get three times if you max out this card. Or at least put one point in it if you use melee weapons at all. But if you're heavy on melee, yeah, max out this card and utilize that three times the damage on a sneak attack. The next two cards, in my opinion, are more waste cards. First one is Packing Light. It just makes your pistols lighter. Usually people don't invest in pistol weapons, except for maybe at the beginning. So this is not, this is a poor investment card. The next one is Secret Agent. This just allows those stealth boys to last twice as long or four times as long. But I find in Fallout 76, I'm not using the stealth boy like I do in Fallout 4 and the other Fallout games. Sneak is a must have card no matter what build you have. It's an excellent, excellent investment. Basically, it improves, of course, if you're, your success with a sneak attack and being able to sneak around the enemy while crouch from 25 to 75%, I would definitely most definitely max out this card and do it as soon as possible. It will help you out a lot, especially when you are the lower levels. Through Hiker is another weight card. It basically will reduce weight for all your drinks and food. It could be a helpful card to slot and unslot as needed, just so that you're not overcome. Uh, not a high priority investment card, but get it when you find that you are getting overweight a lot. White Knight uh, allows your armor to break 20% lower and is cheaper to repair. Of course, the more stars you, stars you put into it, the more it works for you. I find this as a poor investment card, but a card to use when you do get it because all you do is slot it into agility when you go to repair your items. We will now move to the final category, luck perk cards. First up is better criticals. Now I don't use this card. I just feel that it is a waste. It's only on critical shots that you get the extra damage and it's only 40% more damage spending three stars on it. Now you'll have to debate whether or not critical shots are very important to you or not. Bloody Mess, in my opinion, is a better card, even though the damage is a lot lower. You start out at five, 
15% and you go up to 15% on damage, but it's on every shot. The next two cards, in my opinion, are poor investment cards, but definitely use them when you get them, especially when you're low levels. The first one will give you more of a chance to find food, extra food in containers, which if you're trying to keep your health up by being well fed, this is a very good card. The next one is cap collectors and you'll find starting at 33% more caps and stashes, but you don't come across stashes a lot. So again, a good card to have slotted if you have nothing better to slot in your luck area. If you decide that you're going to use mutations, this is a must have card. It's going to negate the negative effects of your mutations up to 75%. So yes, max out this card as soon as you can and you will reap the benefits. Critical Savvy is another Critical Hits card. I just find them a waste card. You don't do Critical Hits a lot. Yes, you do against large enemies. This one will allow you to consume less your critical meter. So in my opinion, a poor investment card, and they're in, just in general, there are better cards to use in luck than this Critical Savvy. If you are finding that you're using bobbleheads and or magazines a lot, Curator is a good investment card. It'll allow them to last twice as long. Dry Nurse is a poor investment card. Basically, you got a chance to get your stem back back after reviving a player. Four Leaf Clover is another critical hits card. Basically, each hit in fats has a chance to fill your critical meter back up. So basically, is it worth spending three stars to have a better chance of an automatic refill? Green Reaper Sprint is a similar card, but this time you're getting a chance to refill your AP, which in my opinion is more valuable than the Four Leaf Culver, but I still don't use either two of the cards. I just find there's better cards to use. Next up, we have Junk Shield. Now I consider this a poor investment card. It does give you both damage and energy resistance, but it depends on how much junk you are carrying. So this will fluctuate and you won't get the maximum. That's why I consider it a waste card. Luck of the draw could be a useful card. What it does is every time you fire the weapon, you are given increasing chances that it will repair itself. Now this should work for any type of weapon, not just range weapons. In my opinion, it's not a very good investment card, but then you might find that you're repairing your weapons all the time and maybe it would be good to invest it. Lucky Break is very similar, but it has to do with your armor. You have more chance of the equipment repairing itself when it is struck. I don't think it's a good investment card. Mysterious Savior is an interesting card. Basically, it increases more and more the chance that when you are, you know, down that someone will this mysterious saber will come and revive you not a high priority investment card and you'd have to decide whether or not it is actually valuable to you how many times do you go down in the game mysterious stranger now he's actually from fallout 4 if you've ever played that game this card is really cool during van during vats you have a increasing chances this guy will show up and assist you in taking out the surrounding enemy. I like it because every once in a while you got a buddy that shows up. Now it's not a high priority investment card. Maybe once you get in the higher levels and you have extra points to spend and have room and luck, he's a great card to have. You'll want to max out this card to make it worth your wild. I consider Mystery Meat to be a poor investment card. What happens is when you use your stem pack, you have a chance that eligible, eligible, edible meat tissue will just, you know, uh, generate. If you find that you're cooking meals a lot with material, it might be helpful to have this card, but yeah, in my opinion, it's a waste card. One Gun Army I consider to be a poor investment card. It's another one of those um, stagger and limb, cripple limb cards, but this time it's for the heavy gun. Again, if you have room, it might be helpful, but there's just so many other cards out there that are better. 
why waste the room? This next card I also consider to be a poor investment card. It's Pharma Pharma. Basically, you're just finding more chems, extra chems and containers when you search for them. It's a useful card to use if you have it and you don't have any other cards to put into luck, but to invest in it, yes, very poor investment. Psychopath is a card that gives you increasing chances to automatically refill your critical meter. To me, I find it to be a waste card. I'm not heavy on the critical, so it would depend on if you find the critical shot very helpful or not, but this only gives you up to 15% chance to, re to refill the critical meter, so I find it to be a poor investment card. Quick Hands can be a useful card. Basically, it's one of those cards that it relies on chance and you can instantaneously reload your clip. Now, this is after the clip is empty. This can be proved to be useful, but again, I don't know that it's a high priority investment card. You would have to decide if it's worth putting the three stars in and taking up room. Ricochet is next and I find it to be a poor investment card because there's still a card that's much better than this and that it is this one deflects back or takes the bullets and throws it back at the enemy who shoots at you with ranged weapons. Now this is a percentage and it's only between 6% and 18%. Like I said there's a better card so I find this to be a poor investment card. Scrounger could be a very useful card to use if you get it for free. It starts out at 40% chance to get extra ammo in ammo containers and goes all the way up to 80% depending on how many stars. Again, do you want to invest your stars in something like this? I think it's a poor investment card. And next is a card I've been talking about but have not actually mentioned its name. It's called Serendipity. This is the card to use and max out to reduce damage, especially if you are a bloody build. These are very useful cards. While you're below 30% health, you gain between 15 to 45% chance to avoid damage. It'll actually sound off as a pachoo every time the card activates and you are not hit by incoming damage. This card actually works with any type of damage you might incur, including falling to your death with a jetpack that has glitched out. <laughs> yes, I've actually had this card activate when I'm falling down with that glitch I mentioned earlier about the, the uh, Secret Service jetpack shooting you way up into the sky and you're falling down. Yes, this is an excellent, excellent investment card. And sadly, this card does not work with power arm. If you want to keep your mutations that you have gathered along the wasteland, this card is a must have and this card must be maxed out for it to be utilized. Is now you'll never lose your mutation by taking rat away and you'll never get a mutation from rats. So now you'll have to depend on the serums, but that way you can select what type of mutation you would like to have. Excellent investment card if you're going to have mutations. Storm Chasers, a very, very poor investment card. You gain health regeneration during the rad storms, but they're not very often. So yeah, very poor investment card. Super Duper is a most excellent, excellent investment card, and you wanna max this card out. What it does is anytime you craft something, you have a chance of doubling the results. Now, it will work with other cards, like I said, with the, the chemical one, but it doesn't exactly double it, it just gives you an extra one. So again, ammo, crafting weapons and armor, this will has a chance of doubling it. Tormentor is next, and I don't find it to be a very good investment card. This is one of those uh, cripple limb cards and it increases in chances the higher it goes. Again, I think it's a waste to try to cripple or um, or stagger an enemy, you want, you want cards that increase the damage to your weapons. That's what you want to focus on, at least at first. 
these last three cards I find to be very poor investments. Last laugh, you drop a grenade and you, from your inventory when you die. Maybe during nuclear winter it might have been useful, but not a lot of people do the player versus player. And to dedicate your points to a card you might not use a lot or not at all, yeah, a waste. Good with salt. Any food in your inventory will last longer up to or not spoil as fast up to 90%. Now it might be helpful if you cook a lot, but yeah, I find that to be a waste card. And last we have woodchucker. You just collect more wood from when you harvest from logs and stuff like that. It could be a useful card when you're looking for material for your camp, but yeah, I find it to be a poor investment card. I will not be going into legendary perk cards in this video, but to find them, all you gotta do is go all the way, all the way up to your perk card top menu and click on that. Or it might be just a continue to press up and you'll hit the category. I'll leave a link to my um, legendary perk card video if you wanna know more about it. Otherwise, I'm going to move on and focus on regular perk cards. Now, last year, or maybe the year before, I can't remember, but Fallout 76 introduced where you can, you'll have extra builds. So basically, you can uh, range one build to be like a bloody, and then range this other build to be for crafting, and that's what I did, and I'll show you more of an example. You will find these punch cards that you can trade out your points at all the train stations. You can also build them at your camps and shelters, so you could also find it at a player camp or shelter. All you do is walk up to these what makes you special cards or the punch machine card and activate the card and it'll take you into this menu. And in this menu, you can see that I actually have three builds. One's called Bloodied, one's called Crafting, and the other one's a default. It's eventually going to be my Power Armor build, but I just have not done anything with it yet. You get one free, so you'll start out with two, and then you can purchase additional ones from the Atomic Shop with your Atoms. Now, as you can see, my Bloody build has high strength, perception, high agility, I used to have high endurance, but I switched it out to luck because I wanted more of the luck cards. Very low charisma, very low intelligence. This character is over level 300, so I've had a chance to mess with the cards and see what cards I like. And I knew where to put the points. Now you can change up points. There's a edit special button. It's the square for the PlayStation. You can also rename your build so you know which one you're talking about by using the triangle for the PlayStation 4. So my bloody build also has different perk cards than my crafting. So let's look at my crafting and where I put the specials. For a crafting build, you're going to want to max out your intelligence. I also use my crafting build as my barter build. So I have some points in Charisma where I put all those barter cards. That way at all the train stations, I can just turn around and switch over to my crafting build, barter, turn back around and revert back to my bloody build. Let me now show you the perk cards I put in crafting. So I've dedicated this build just for repairing and dealing with vendors. So of course, in luck I have the super duper, which is very important when crafting. In agility, I got the ammo smith, I also put home defense there. The rest of them are just your basic cards, not that important. Intelligence is where, of course, I put all my crafting cards. You're gonna see the armorer, the scrapper, the gunsmith, the weapon artist, and the fix it good. Under charisma, I did the magnetic personality and hard bargain. And that way I have maxed out all that I can get out of bartering. And basically the rest of the cards in my crafting, they're just there because they're leftovers. They're not gonna actually help me build anything. Now that I have leveled up, I might go back and see if there are any more crafting cards I can add. But you definitely, in your crafting build, you want the maximum intelligence once you're up there, which is 15. Um, you want at least three points and luck for the super duper. 
you definitely want at least two points for the ammo smith. Now these cars can be slotted and unslotted. So when I go to work on like power armor, there might be a couple cards that are more um, useful for, to me than the gunsmith when working on power armor. Now the other nice thing about these builds is that you at that punch card machine can trade out points. Say you don't have the 15 points in intelligence that you want. You can go over to strength, like if this is your crafting, take some points from strength and put them into intelligence and vice versa. If what I'm saying is a little confusing, just throw in a question in the comments and I'll try to make it a little bit more clear, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on. So with the add-on of builds to Fallout 76, you're not locked into where you put your points. Say you put points into strength, bunch of them, and then realize that's not where you want them. You can go to these punch card machines and switch them out. So you're not locked in, which is great. So experiment, see where you want your points. Um, I would definitely put them into strength and agility at the beginning if you're just trying to do like a survival mode put some points into perception, some into endurance, and yeah, just mess with them. You might find that you've gotten a perk card for free that you want to use and don't have the point for it. Well, go take a point from someplace else and put it in that category for now. Okay, just to recap, at each level all the way up to 50, you will be given one special point to put in one of your specials to increase it. So you will not be able to max out every special. Armor, weapons, and other things will give you extra points in these special categories, but they will not work with perk cards. So you might be able to go over um, 15 in your strength, but you will not be able to use more than 15 points worth of perk cards. Now, each level that you do gain, you will always earn a perk card point. Now to spend the perk cards, you actually go into the perk card category and grab one and add them to your stash. Every five levels, you will get a perk card pack, which will give you four free perk cards to use or not to use. You will not have access to all the perk cards right away to purchase from. Only a few are added. I don't know if it's per level, every five levels. I believe it's per level, so you just go up into the thing and see what new cards they have added that are available to purchase with your perk points. Okay, I hope I've covered everything. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, that is it for this uh, ultimate quick guide at looking at all the perk cards. Hopefully it was helpful. If you did find it helpful, don't forget to like and share. And until next time.